Guys, I am back, and I have a brand new brand that I have not looked at before. I don't know if you guys have looked at before. It's called, well, you can see what it's called. It's called With Armor. This is a company that contacted me. You know, I like to be right up front about this stuff. They asked me if I would be willing to look at their stuff and do some reviews, and they were very confident about their product. They originally were, they said, pick as many as you want. Look at all of our, our stuff. And I, honestly, I said, really? I had picked out like 10 different models. And from that list, they said, well, we have this many available on Amazon right now, so we will ship you those many. So I had, they had five of the 10 that I wanted to, to check out on Amazon, so I got five. So I just decided that I was going to start this off with the biggest one of them all. I got three folders and I got two fixed blades, and we're gonna jump in with one of the fixed blades here. So, but like I, I like to be upfront about when I spend my own money or when the Patreon team, um, you know, and, and their support has given funds for stuff or in a case where the company has provided samples. So just so you guys know that up front that I'm being totally straight with you. So we're gonna look at the With Armor and I believe this model is called the Mammoth. Does that, doesn't, doesn't really have the uh, title on here. You can hear a little bit more um, vehicle traffic in the background because there's a huge accident on one of the main roads and the detour takes every single vehicle in the state of Pennsylvania um, through our little back roads, which is which is fantastic. I'm so happy about that right now. Um, so I'm sorry for the extra vehicle noise if you hear it in the background as I'm filming. It's a high-tech tactical outdoor brand. Okay. So inside, we've got the knife itself, of course. Oh, we've got our tactical do not eat it. Let's see. what this has for us. Warranty. Warranties are good. It's about us. Lifelong warranty. Cool. This warranty does not cover damage due to rust, accident, loss, and proper use. It's okay. Whatever. It looks like... What is that? Is that like a hovercraft going by? It looks like this one might have been sitting in the box for a little while. This is uh, a little bit dirty, but not damaged. All right, so starting out, we've got a um, Kydex sheath with the little, with armor, looks like laser engraved on there. Uh, tech lock, adjustable, standard, you know, how you wanna put that. Horizontal carry, vertical carry, whatever. We've exposed the blade already. I was gonna, I wanted that to be a little bit of a surprise, but I just wanted to see how well that holds in, and that holds in very well. Nice. So the sheath is well done, well executed, really holds firmly. Um, not too much effort to get in and out of there. Not bad. The knife itself, well, Mammoth, I think, is a very good uh, description of this blade. So let's uh, take a look at the blade itself. Huge. Big old blade. That traffic going by here is going to annoy me so much today. You can see it's, it's 440C which is, uh, it's not high-end, it's not, but, I mean, it's it's not bad either. 440C, when cared for, is a durable steel. Um, and it, is it, you know, 154CM? No. Is it one of the super steels? No. But it's a good, solid stainless steel. Now, it's interesting that something like this would be produced in a stainless rather than a carbon, but they've got their reasons. For those of you interested in blade markings, um, you've got your, um, you know, trademark on either side, and then your model number and your blade steel, and that's it. You've got full, obviously, full tang all the way through. I kind of like this two-tone finish. You've got those Strider-style chainring bolts all the way down, holding those sculpted G10 scales on there. Off the bat, I would say, I like the jimping here, I would like some jimping uh, on the thumb ramp over there. I can see, you, you could tell they're intending for this to be used for multiple purposes. They gave you the jimping for choking up and, you know, um, holding it sort of like a Skinner style knife up there for your kind of not just your big 
heavy um, in the woods knife, but also for doing some delicate work up front, you've got a really big finger choil up there at the base of the blade. And actually, this is very comfortable to hold this way. So if you did want to use it kind of as a skinner, whether you hold it this way to get fine control there, or you just want to choke up and really get your thumb in there for some power, it works. It's a really nice handle design. And then, of course, this guard is great because no matter what you're doing with it, um, holding it reverse grip and chopping down, it's going to hold your hand there. Nothing's going to slide. Uh, stabbing, if you're doing that kind of penetration work, it's cool. And then it's very comfortable just to hold it. And again, for big hands, I'm always commenting knives that are too small for big hands. This one is not. A name like Mammoth, it better not be too small for big hands. So comfortable grip, lots of real estate. Again, I think just a good opportunity to put some jimping right there, and that might be, you know, a custom thing that you could do. Maybe I will do that. Um, right there, just to give a little bit more traction for when you're holding it there. Yeah, even when you got your, your choked up a little bit finger in the choil, this is a little bit, it's a really nice finish, just a little bit slick. So I'm going to stop beating that dead horse. Um, but the grip is really, really comfortable, no matter how you choose uh, to hold on to it put it in a reverse grip, they've even got a little bit of jimping down at the pommel for you to help hold on to it. Weight and balance is actually is actually really good. It's easy to find that center point right there. I'm actually pretty impressed with, with how easy it is to, to figure out where that kind of midpoint is. And they built it in perfectly. I mean, it's it's kind of right there, right between those, those two choils area, kind of. Um, right where your fingers are going to support most of the weight if you're going to kind of do that choked up grip. It's great. On first thoughts, I would have thought this handle would have been a little bit skinny considering the size and weight of the knife, but then you pick it up and you're like, wow, that's pretty nice. Not bad. And then, of course, the sculpting on the, the G10 there gives you plenty of traction. Um, I guess that the skinny size, or what appears to be the skinny size of the handle, also helps. If you've got gloves on, you're not going to then be dealing with an overly bulky handle, you know? If you've got gloves on, though, I wonder, and I don't have a big pair of like um, heavyweight gloves to put on right now, like if you're wintering it or something. Just I wonder then, is, are you going to have problems with bulk on your fingers in this area right here? I don't know. That's something maybe to be a little concerned with. I can kind of see um, an argument for the two section blade there now that I can see like they've got the, the extra jimping up there. So you've got two blade widths. Now they're not separated by, by much um, if you see the difference in the width, but you've got kind of a, think of it as a wider area thicker area, more reinforced maybe uh, in in the rear for, for chopping, and then sort of a, a thinner section for slicing up front. Although, you know, the truth is they're not really, if you look, they're, they're not really separated by that much, so I don't know how much that actually affects any of the function of the blade. Um, it doesn't really change the width at all on the spine, so does it really, you know, in a knife where that's a more dramatic change in width or maybe changes the grind a little bit that'd be one thing but I mean it still looks cool uh, I think that maybe some of the design here is more stylish than functional I, I don't know how what is that one mil maybe two mils difference I don't know how much that affects the difference in cutting surfaces what you do end up with though it take a look at that wood that's a nice solid thick piece of steel to support whatever kind of hard use you're going to put this thing through. And at first I was thinking, you know what, we're just going to do, you know, the standard mini review. I think a knife like this deserves a hard use test. So I think we're going to test the edge and then we're going to put it through a little bit of work too. Let's give it some paper. Well, would you look at that right out of the box? Now it is damp out here and the paper is wet, which could give it some problems. It is very damp out here, but that is not, um, that is not cool.
so I I cut to some time inside just to see how some paper that's not outside in the damp would work and I think what we saw was number one I'm not a big fan of the VA right now number two um, the the forward thinner area was was working a little bit better but the edge could use a little bit of work right out of the box sure but um, you know I'm wondering how this is gonna work so our fine edge wasn't doing great on the paper I wonder how that's going to work for the rest of our testing, though. Um, and, you know, I've said before, the edge is, you know, it's great to be finished great out of the box. That's a, a good measure. And I wonder how the other ones are going to stack up, you know, when we get them out of the box. Let's do the pull through, which I'm not, you know, after that, I don't have a lot of high hopes for. But let's see. No. No. But we'll try a slice. A little bit more leverage actually in a pull through. Nope. Slice cut actually pretty nicely uh, on the forward part of the blade. Let's do the rear part. <sighs> nope. Well, kind of. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I was. Let's see. Yeah, so the front edge. This forward edge is really nicely done, could be improved. The rear edge, and now if you want to say that that extra thickness is holding us up, I don't know. Um, at the end of all this, I will put it through my own personal hand sharpening. We're going to go next to my usual first item up after we test the edge. We're going to do the old ground stab a -roo. So for those of you who have not seen how I do this before, um, the first kind of test is going to be just stabbing in and out of the ground, replicating, maybe digging a, digging an entrenchment, digging a hasty fighting position, um, whatever it is that we would do with our with our knives in the military. Um, lots of using them for all sorts of stuff they're not originally intended for. So the first couple are going to be light, just to make sure we're not smacking the tips straight into any rocks that are down there, and then we're just going to go for 50. Um, full speed, full bore, straight in and out. What this potentially does to our blade is that, you know, the dirt itself has lots of little microcrystalline structures. I mean, dirt is millions of tiny, tiny, little, teeny, tiny rocks. So we'll see how that affects our blade as we go in and out and anything else it might encounter. So, anything down there that's going to destroy the tip? No? Okay. Feel good. What that also is doing is giving me a chance to see how comfortable it is, you know, as we're going through all that stuff. And this feels pretty good. Um, probably easier to do that kind of thing with a gloved hand. Although, on the downstroke, a little bit of pressure on the pinky there. Might also be my positioning here, kind of squatting as I'm doing it. But um, pretty comfortable to hold. No hot spots or anything like that. Don't see any damage to the tip, so that's good. Um, don't see any real damage to the coating, although we've darkened up our laser marks there. Don't see any serious chips to the blade. Feel maybe a little bit of rolling, honestly. A little bit of rolling, but no actual like damage to the blade itself. So on to the next test. All right, now this is this is my favorite part. Now we do the soda can. Um, soda can. Um, you know, it, it's just soda can, I know. It's very, very thin tin aluminum. But it does kind of represent going through um, whatever, whatever kind of like light metallic stuff, light armor, um, cutting through some of the, uh, we have a lot of stuff in the military that's kind of got a light kind of tin foil slash light aluminum wrapping when we have to cut through stuff, um, you know, to a bigger extent cutting through an aircraft aluminum skin it is it's 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 tough but it's it's a very light material if you have to punch through it and cut stuff out of it or cut it pile it out or whatever so i can feel that we've already got like a burr on here um on the edge we must have found some pretty hard earth down there but i love doing this because it's just fun so
Okay, that's always fun to do. It's just fun. But I want to make sure I get any of these little jagged aluminum pieces. So we have kids and dogs running around the yard real quick. So we've been using this log and abusing it lately for a couple other videos. We'll just continue that trend. Um, the blade has, I can feel the difference now, but here we go, chop, chop, chop. It's actually doing pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually, uh, it, it's kind of in order to feel like I got good leverage, I'm not holding it, you know, the way it's intended for cutting, kind of just sort of letting it go here. Um, but it, it's got, you know, the, again, the weight and balance, great chop kind of mass on the blade itself. Now, in terms of its ability after all that to do fine work, um, I think it's still capable. Take a look at that. I mean, you have to guide it along and help it, but it's doing it. Enough of this, we'll start a good fire. Well, it'll chop. Let's move on to the most dreaded test of all. The cardboard. Yep. Once again, the cardboard. The arch nemesis of any blade in any steel ever. We're gonna do what we do. You're going to cut all the way through this box, piece by piece, and I'm going to look for some good music for you guys to listen to as I go through this whole thing. So, guys, we got a little bit of a problem yesterday with the video. I, I did cut through all the cardboard, but there was a bit of an incident with my bad shoulder where, um, well, it, was, it caused me to have to go to the emergency room. I called my doctor, and um, she told me to go meet her at the emergency room because um, that's the same hospital where I did my surgery and everything. Um, and I am, I am back to chicken wing status for a while now. Um, and probably I was I shouldn't have been told I could take off my sling as early as I did and there's a problem with with some torn stuff in my shoulder now and some pain to a nerve and all that anyway so yeah I'm gimpy again um, but what had happened was what had happened was um, I left the camera rolling uh, through the last part of the um, cardboard cutting and so the camera died. And when the camera dies before I hit the, the button to actually stop, it doesn't save the whole thing. So I have gone through all the cardboard. It, it didn't save the last part of it though, but we have cut through all the cardboard. Um, so you're only gonna, you've only seen part of the cardboard cutting, but we're gonna move on to the next step, which is 10 feet of 550 cord. And Ethan is going to town with a Nerf machete on that uh, thing hanging up over there. But, yeah, we are going to cut through 10 feet of 550 cord um, to with the stump as a, as a uh, cutting board here. And then we'll take a look at where our edge is at and evaluate. Well, you can see here how that forward jimping and that ability to kind of choke up on this is really helping out with the dull blade to make these cuts. So good design function, really good, especially for when your knife has been used and used and used and you're losing some of that uh, fine cutting surface. Well done.
All right, so taking a look at the edge. Let's see if we can get a real good shot here. It's hard for me to see the, the camera because it's a little bright out. So taking a look at the edge here, we definitely have some rolls. I don't know if they're actual genuine chips in the blade, but if you feel the burrs on this side, you can definitely see the edge. I mean, and we did a lot of we did a lot of abuse to this thing, but we're gonna have to work on that a little bit. We knew that this was part of the plan, though. Um, we were trying to do as much damage to the edge as we could, because now the fun part is, yay! Let's get this on some stones and let's see what it takes to put a nice fine edge back on. Now notice though through all that we didn't lose anything on the tip, okay? The tip is still sharp and pointy as it came. We actually still have a good basis. We don't have to reprofile this or anything. We might need to, if those are actual chips, instead of just rolls in the steel and, and, um, and burrs, we, um, you know, we'll smooth those out and everything. But we still have a good, I mean, the, the bezel here is good. I don't need to change the angle up or anything. I don't, I don't think. Um, so, you know, I don't need to, I don't feel like I need to put it on a Lansky or other angle guide to reset the angle of this. I just need to get to work refining that edge that's there. And we'll see. Now, we don't want it to be too easy because, you know, if it's too easy for us, there's doubts as to how well it holds an edge at all. But we also don't want it to be incredibly hard, like it's got a, you know, we don't want it to be to the point where if you have this out in the field, you're putting more effort into maintaining the edge than it's worth to have as a tool. So let me get to work on this next phase. After working on the edge, you can see, got rid of all those burrs, all the folding. I wanted to be true to my kind of test that I like to do. So I didn't use um, my regular, you know, Japanese water stones. I wanted to, I figured when I did the buck and bear test, I used those to put the, um, the edge back on. And I thought, you know, that might be actually a little unfair towards the buck and bear because you know, the whole goal is to use what you might have with you in the field or stones that are more representative to what you have, you know, packed away. So I ended up using something very simple. I used the, the Smith's Trihone, uh, very affordable, very available. But the, the important thing is it uses just regular old whetstones. These are synthetic whetstones, stuff that, you know, anybody might be able to get their hands on anywhere and throw in a pack, take camping, um, having a bug out bag, whatever. Um, so I counted the number of strokes that I did just so to let you guys know since I didn't record it all. So I did 12 strokes on each side of the blade with the course just to get those edge folds out and make sure we uh, reset the edge. Um, I did it all by hand. Um, I just maintained the angle that came on the blade. Then I did... Um, so I was working in groups of four. Uh, four strokes on each side. Then I did 12 strokes on the medium to sort of refine and then I did 20 on each side of the fine just to polish away. <clears throat> so I didn't do really, I mean we're talking maybe 20 minutes at the most, 15-20 minutes of actual sharpening time and that's as far as I went. So normally when I'm doing some real hand sharpening of a blade, I'm, I'm going to go much finer than what is available there. To be honest, I don't know what the grits on these stones even are. They're just the fine, medium, and, and coarse. Um, I'm going to be much more precise and work to a much finer result than this. But, like I said, the whole point of this hard-use test is to work the edges really, really hard to a point where we know it's not really efficiently cutting anymore and then do some basic edge maintenance like you might do in the field and then see how that basic edge maintenance puts the edge back on. So, let's hope this goes well. Eh, still having trouble with this back part of the blade there. I don't know what the deal is. And yes, we're still it's humid, damp paper, but much better than it was cutting before. 
still having a little trouble holding the paper nicely with one arm in the sling, but you can see just that little bit of basic edge maintenance restores that edge very, very well. Now, I'm glad it's not perfectly, if it was perfectly razor sharp with just what I did, and it was like slicing the paper like it was not even there, we didn't, I didn't want the result to be too perfect, and here's why. If that blade steel was so soft that what I did with these stones made it, you know, um, ninja scroll katana perfect, that, that, that blade still would be way too soft. It means it's not going to hold that edge at all. So we've got some good heat treat on the blade. We've got a knife that will take an edge, that will hold an edge, that you can put an edge back onto. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to do the full treatment on it. I'm going to make this edge razor sharp. I'm going to make it shiny, sterling, reflectively polished there because I think we're going to give this blade away. It was a free sample to me, and I think I should pass that on. So now here comes the what do you guys think of the with armor mammoth. Ideally, I would like to see a blade like this made out of carbon steel um, for the better edge retention, for the better edge hardness. There is something to be said for making it of stainless steel for corrosion resistance. Typically, I think a blade like this would be made out of out of a, um, a carbon, but I see a lot more of these smaller fixed blades uh, made out of stainless these days. So now it's time for you guys to discuss. What do you think? Here's a question for you guys. Is there something else you would like to see me add into the hard use testing that I do? Well, we've got four more knives from With Armor that we will be looking at. We won't be hard use testing them all, but I thought that this was a perfect platform to start off with and then, you know, to really check how they treat their steel. And um, normally we're, we're hard use testing carbon steels because those are ideal hard use knives, but I wanted to check this one out. As a courtesy to With Armor for providing the free sample, I'm going to put a link to their Amazon listing in the video description so you can go there if you'd like to while you're there. You can check out all those other cool links. You can check out a link to the Discord server that the Golden Atlas has created and is maintaining. And people should not give me any credit for that Discord server that I made it or I said it. I did. I had nothing to do with it. It was all the Golden Atlas's idea. We have a lot of fun talking. There's kind of the usual suspects, like the standard crew that's in there. And we have a lot of fun discussing all sorts of stuff. There's all kinds of channels in there to talk about military stuff, knife stuff, gun stuff, um, all sorts of stuff. But uh, go on in there and check it out. And um, don't give me any of the credit. I'm just, I'm just a talker in there. Uh, the Golden Atlas is the one who did this all, so thank him if you enjoy that. Link to the Patreon page. Um, go check that out. Maybe sign up. Maybe uh, take an active role in supporting the stuff that goes on here. And see the cool bonus stuff that you could get um, for doing that. And then, of course, Facebook page, uh, standard email address, and all that stuff. So I hope you guys have liked this video. What do you think of this knife? Are you interested in seeing some more stuff from this brand? Because you're gonna. Um, I'm gonna do my best to not let the re-chicken winged status keep me from the usual upload schedule. I aim for every Monday and Wednesday and Friday, if you haven't figured that out, with a Tuesday and Thursday or Saturday mixed in, now and then as I can. So as long as you guys are still watching, I will keep making new videos. Well, you guys are all totally awesome. I really do appreciate every single one of you. Every single one. And I will be back again real soon.